Hey guys, Iceman here. How's it hanging, bruh? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to go about making a pure lightning javazan. All right, uh, the non-hybrid type. I do have a hybrid type as well, and uh, I made a video on that one back in the day. Well, a couple months ago, and I will probably revisit that one soon. But check this out, man. And one more thing, okay? Some of you guys are helping me out on Patreon. And I appreciate that. So if you want, go to my Triassic Iceman Patreon page and you can become a patron as well. I only have seven so far, but it's better than zero. But nonetheless, the more money's the better. So if you want to hook me up, yeah, click the link in the description below. And I have something else coming uh, your way for fans who might be interested, okay? It's a little something Iceman and his women have been concocting but more on that hopefully in the next video and I will break this video up into points so uh, check the description of the video and uh, you can click on the points that I'm about to make on this bill okay but we're gonna start off with the gear and in this Javazan build I go with a basic Titans Revenge non ethereal plain uh, matriarchal upped javelins okay you can up them with a pull rune and some other rune and a gem. I don't know what it is. You can look it up on the uh, Ariat Summit website. But I like to up them because they do more damage, obviously. And when they do more damage, they also leech more life and mana, if you have mana leech. So it's a good way to go. Now, Daddy really doesn't like using Ethereal Titans, okay? And I know a lot of folks will probably talk shit about that, but me just don't really care that much. And if you want to talk shit, do it in the comments below, please. And like the damn video. But I do have an Eth Titan's Revenge somewhere. Maybe not even on this character anymore. That's how little I give a shit about them. But uh, I rarely ever use them. Just because I like throwing the javelins like a bat out of hell, man. So I really don't like having to go to town to repair them. Because obviously they do regenerate Titan's Revenge. But it takes forever to regenerate, man. Especially if you're throwing them like crazy like what I like to do. And then you need like a nice pair of... Uh, 20 increased attack speed plus two skills preferably with other mod gloves rare gloves or you can use laying of hands which I like to use as well laying of hands is nice because it gives you 350 percent damage to demons and if you do up your deck sum which is what I done with this character you'll be doing more damage man so it really rocks so laying of hands are a good way to go plus you get 50 fire res which is godly and you're probably gonna need uh, as much res as you can get if you're going this build but just FYI, this is my ladder USC's build, okay? Softcore. <laughs> so, I don't have all the GG, man. I'm missing a few things, but this is just my build so far. So ideally, you probably want some two skills GG rare gloves. <clears throat> or use laying of hands. Try them both out, and then uh, decide from there. But as for the ring, you want to go with the Raven Frost. The attack rating's nice, and you need the Cannot Be Frozen mod as well. For belts, I like Razor Tail. Now, it is important to have a T-Gods in your stash so you can absorb uh, lightning when the uh, enemies are uh, lightning attacking you like the uh, ghost thingies in the World Stone Keep in particular. Those things are just devastating, man. So you got to wear this when you're running the World Stone Keep, which is a great place to run because it's a high-level area where like high stuff can drop. Now, don't be deceived by the Lightning Fury on this <clears throat> because... You're going to be doing a hell of a lot more damage, man, if you go Razor Tail, because then 100%, if you do your skills right, 100% of your Javelin tosses are going to pierce. Every time it pierces through an enemy and it hits another, it emits another Lightning Fury. And I've had people commenting on my videos, they'll be like, Iceman, what the hell, you're emitting a ton more Lightning Fury than I am on your hits, and uh, apparently my skill's even higher than yours. And the reason being is because I'm wearing Razor Tail, man. So it just pierces the shit out of everything, and it just casts so many bolts. And every time it does that, obviously, it doubles the damage, man. So wear this over Thunder Gods, trust me. Especially for cow levels or dense monster areas. I mean, it is just epic, man. So Razor Tail is a good way to go. And really, if you're building a build like what I have, the uh, max damage actually goes a long ways. So that's a helpful mod as well. And I like to have a Mana Leech Ring as well with whatever mods you can get it's ideal to have attack rating 
and res. <clears throat> so this one is a pretty damn nice one, man. For mana leech, attack rating, and res. Because obviously there's all res on there. But uh, I like going something in that route. Uh, Stone of Jordan, obviously. People like that. Or BK Ring. But you know what? Daddy just... I kind of like having a more versatile build. You know, you don't really got to optimize the skills with the Javas on. The damage is just, just so devastating anyway. That that cute little skill you get from Stone of Jordan or BK Ring, I don't think is worth it. Compared to the other mods you can go for. Like, for example, you really need some Mana Leech. Because it helps a lot. And, uh... So it's just, I would take that over the one skill any day, man. Some mana leech over the one skill is, is a good way to go. Plus you can get other nice mods that SOJ does not offer. And check this out. Silkweave, and I know these look like shitty boots. And uh, people like to use War Travelers or something generally, but... Iceman likes keeping his mana up. And when you're killing things like crazy, you need some mana per kill, man. And Lore Helm is nice in the beginning. You know, the Ort Cell Runeward Helm. Uh, because it gives two mana per kill. And it gives a skill and a few other nice mods. But uh, you got to be having mana per kill throughout your build. <clears throat> as soon as you can. Even if you're running the Den of Evil in Act 1, you're level 1. And uh, you're progressing, man. If you find those one mana per kill magic rings, I always pop those on. I'm pretty sure with this character, by level 20, I had two of them on. And then a few other things. Uh, the Tur runes become helpful as well. You can pop Turs into shields or helmets. And uh, that'll help up your mana per kill until you get some Silk Weaves. Silk Weaves is, is bare minimum, I think, is 5 mana per kill with this with this build. But see see my mana pot? It, 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 it stays up for the most part. See that? Because you're killing things so fast. That uh, it, it primarily stays filled. And the Mana Leech helps as well. But remember, Mana Leech doesn't work against Undead. So you're going to be running a ton out of mana, man, when you're fighting Undead. And they take... Uh, a good percentage of the enemies in this game are undead. I mean, it might be close to 40 to 50 percent. So a lot of times, and they're everywhere. You know, there's undead in the uh, in the arcane sanctuary as well. Although it might just be the skeletons that you don't leech from. I think you do actually leech from the undead wraiths in the arcane sanctuary or in the chaos sanctuary. But I don't know that for sure. I have to double check the facts on that, bro. I think you do leech from those guys though, uh, for mana. And life, but then the shield I like to go with the storm shield. And probably a lot of people talk shit, you know, they go on about spirit and how spirit's an epic shield. But one thing about storm shield is you can socket it, and then you can put whatever you want in it. And in this case, a lightning facet. So you can't do that with spirit. So it's a, it's a hard thing to decide. I'm going to experiment some with spirit as well because spirit is beneficial because it has 55 faster hit recovery, and you're kind of lacking that with this build. And you might want to try to make up for that in your charms to some extent. Get the five faster hit recovery with another FX uh, charm. You know what I mean? The small charms. And try to stack those up. But uh, Storm Shield is nice. You can pop a light fast in there, man. Because the negative uh, to enemy lightning resistance is freaking GG. And you need that with this character. I and mean, Griffins would be ideal, but I don't have that yet. But Storm Shield is nice. It gives you a lot of res. gives you some strength. Uh, and uh, a big thing about it is the damage reduction. 35% or 30% uh, damage reduction. <clears throat> damage reduced by 35%, man. So that's epic. And obviously the defense is nice. And a few other mods. But I like Storm Shield for the block rate, the faster block rate, the damage reduction, and the fact that you can put a, a jewel in it. But uh, yeah, Spirit has something to be said about it as well. Well, this is going to be, I think, a bit more, quite a bit more defensive. Cat's Eye, the faster you run and the faster you kill shit, the more GG you're going to find, you know? And Cat's Eye gives you 30% faster run walk, and it has that essential attack speed as well, that High Lords has as well. I always, almost always take Cat's Eye over High Lords, although I do like to have a High Lords in Stash, for when my lightning res sucks and when I'm running the World Stone Keep, for example. I'll pop on the High Lords and I'll also pop on uh, the Thunder God's Belt. But in almost every other situation, I'm just going straight uh, Cat's Eye because you're just running a hill a lot faster, man. And the breakpoints are very uh, minimal when it comes to run walk speeds. So almost every bit you get counts. Uh, look into the breakpoints, though, if you want. You can check that out. 
Uh, just look at a breakpoints calculator or something. <clears throat> but nonetheless, you can find them all over the internet, man. <clears throat> you can just Google it. Uh, Amazon Diablo 2 breakpoints, and you should be able to find the run walk breakpoints as well. But the faster you run, the more you can clear areas in uh, the most minimal amount of time. So that's why you gotta get Cat's Eye, man. Experiment some, get High Lords. The Deadly Strike isn't that important. Because like 90% of your damage, 99% of your damage probably, is all the Lightning Fury. So that's pretty much uh, what you need if you want to uh, be the super efficient build with this with this Java Light Zon. Uh, Shaco, Harlequin Crest. Gives you a ton of mana and life. You know, some damage reduction, nice MF. And you can socket it as well. So you put a 15 IS jewel in there and two to skills. This skill is, this this helm uh, is usually my second choice. Uh, first being Griffins. And I haven't found Griffins yet, the Diadem. It's just so damn hard to find, man. And Iceman doesn't want to cheat and just grab it from somebody, you know. Or just pick it up on some currency website. So, uh, you know, a lot of the game's enjoyment is finding your GG, you know. So, I mean, I've taken a few things, yeah. But uh, as for the Griffins, I mean, gotta gotta keep searching for something, you know. So maybe I'll find one. I probably won't, though, man. I mean, this ladder doesn't have too much longer to go. But if I do, I'll be making a video and showing off the Griffins, man. Griffins is just GG, and it's important to have Griffins because even though my Merc has Infinity, and I'll get to that later, when Infinity breaks a light res, for example, it's only twenty percent effective. So it's not taking them very low in their light res. So they're still highly resistant to your light damage. That's why you need negative light percent gear, because that's 100% effective when it works against immunity that is broken. So the Griffins, you know, will give you an extra negative 20% light res, or something in that range. And you will just obliterate everything, man. Even light res enemies, or a highly light res enemies, or light immunes, are going to kick their ass. That's why you got to get a Griffins. But nonetheless... I'm using Shaco right now, and it's it's more defensive than Griffins, which is nice. You can kind of sit back and chill with Shaco a bit more. But again, it's not as effective in terms of kill speed. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing about Griffins is it has cast rate. <clears throat> and it's nice to hit those cast break points. So check out the break points as well. But the reason you want the cast break points is because of this. I'm also using Enigma. <clears throat> now, I've used Chains of Honor on a uh, Javazon before. And the uh, last ladder, that was my primary cho choice. In fact, Daddy worked his freaking tail off, man, uh, trying to attain that Chains of Honor. I just kept trading up stuff, just socketables and runes, and I finally got a Burr rune. And I traded a bunch of mid runes, one high rune of some sort, of lesser value, my Shaco, I tossed in there. I think I tossed in Skulder's Ire that were both socketed. And I tossed in so much shit. And I finally got a Burr Rune from some person who was kind of a noob who just found it, they said, in the Chaos Sanctuary with their Sorceress. It was like their first High Rune they got this season. But I just traded them so much shit for it. And it was, it was probably a pretty good trade in reality. I don't think I ripped them off. <coughs> Maybe I got slightly the better deal. I don't know. If you consider its actual, you know, currency value or whatever. But nonetheless, I finally got a Chains of Honor, man. So I experimented a lot with that. And that's a great armor. But the thing is, in Hell Mode, you're, kissing at, you're, you're kicking ass so fast anyway. That those highly defensive purposes on Chains of Honor just don't really shine too much. Because you don't really need it when you're murdering things so freaking fast with the Amazon. The only time it really comes in handy is against Ubers or against uh, the lesser Ubers when you're getting uh, the organ pieces, if you want to do that. But of course, it's not optimal really to do that with an Amazon. So basically, I would just do that for fun. I joined the Uber games just for fun, man. Uh, just because I was a highly defensive Javazon. But at this point, Enigma is just the way to go, brah. For now, for Iceman. I mean, for one, you get a ton of MF. Check that out. I got 90% magic, fine. At level 90, obviously. And you get 14 life per kill, which really adds up when you're killing like crazy with the Amazon. It gives you the same damage reduction uh, that Chains of Honor gives. But uh, a lot of strength, so that really helps you tweak your character. 
And the 45 run walk is a pretty big thing that I like over the chains of honor on this Enigma. There's the run walk, man. You're just running so freaking fast. It's really nice how, how much faster you can run with Enigma. All right. Now check that out, man. So I do prefer Enigma. And I do, and I, uh, well, for this, this time anyway. It's nice to have both, obviously, for different situations. But all around, man, Enigma rocks. And I only teleport when needed. Like if you got to, uh, if you got to reposition your Merc, let's say, because you're facing some light immunes and he's just stuck in a corner, you can reposition your Merc with it and then just go forth. So I primarily run. You know, I don't teleport all the time. For one, the Amazon has a horrible cast rate, which is why you probably need a cast rate rare ring to take the place of this one with Mana Leech and some res, preferably in her attack rating. But I just don't have that right now. You also need um, Griffin's Eye for cast rate. And when you teleport on Switch, you can have a Spirit Shield and a Wizard Spike to just, uh, you just use the W button to switch to your off offset weapons or offhand weapons and shields. And uh, you can just go from there, man. And then switch right back when you want to start casting your, your Lightning Fury and stuff. But nonetheless, Enigma is a great way to go <clears throat> for those reasons. Primarily the teleport and the faster run walk is why I like it over Chains of Honor. And the the, the uh, life per kill really adds up, bruh. So take Iceman's word for it. And then in my inventory, I just have uh, not, not too many decent charms, but it's good to have the skillers with faster run walk and it's good to have a torch obviously and an annie but i haven't received an annie in a long time in the last two ladders at least because i think the bots have been crunched down on and there's just less sojs in the market right now so less people are selling them i think that's the reason behind it i mean i used to see them selling all the time in the ladder realms but not anymore but nonetheless it's good to have you know i mean these charms are nowhere near perfect like i would prefer to have a faster run walk with a resistance small charm I'm pretty sure they exist and these with 7% faster run walk I've attained those before I had one on my last ladder it'd be ideal to have a few of those with faster run walk and to then just make up for your resistances that you're lacking in but uh, my stats are kind of shitty and my resists are kind of shitty you know I need to bump those up with small charms but I just don't have them right now. And uh, maybe a few other things. You could put an Umrune in your Storm Shield to, um, to bump up those res. But uh, yeah, the res are kind of shitty, but you're just killing so fast, it doesn't really matter, man. And it's primarily shitty because you're wearing Enigma. So Chains of Honor obviously will max all those out, almost. So it's just a give and take, man. When you use an Enigma, don't expect to have the best resistances. In fact, they might be kind of shitty. But I think you'll still be all right. And then here's the stats. You know, I like to have over 200 decks. My strength is way up right now. It's way too high, over 100. Uh, because it's uh, it's over 100 beyond what it needs to be. Because I just didn't tweak out this character. But it just goes to show, I'm just my Amazon's running around kicking ass. And it's not even tweaked, you know what I mean? But ideally, you'd want just enough strength to use your gear. So if you're always using Enigma... You just need to get to 156 strength after having Enigma on. And uh, that's so you can wear your Storm Shield or your Spirit Shield. And that's not too hard to attain at all then. So you'll have a ton more to put into Vitality and distribute some in decks. I like having some decks because it helps your attack rating. But not only that, but it also uh, boosts your damage some, your physical damage. And physical damage is nice to have on the Amazons. Because it actually does do quite a bit makes quite a bit of a difference against uh, light immunes. But but there you have it, man. And then I'll show you my Mercs gear. Infinity, which is expensive as hell. I finally attained one of these way into the ladder. It's just end game stuff, you know? You're gonna kill the light immunes finally with not much trouble at all. And perhaps more importantly, everything that's not light immune, you're just gonna waste it. So you're just flying through the game with Infinity, man. It's almost cheating, right? It's GG. 
I mean, it even looks awesome. And I made it in a pretty awesome looking item. See, Iceman gets style points for making it into a great poleaxe. Uh, this is just a budget helm. Piece of shit. Ideally, you'd want probably an Andariel's Visage with a Rao rune in it. Hit some attack speed breakpoints. But Talrasha's really isn't that bad. It gives you 10 life, Solemper hit, and 15 all res, you know? So you don't need to socket anything. You don't need to put an arm in it. It already has all res. So it's really not a bad helm. And uh, the problem with Treachery is it barely ever casts the damn fade. See, he's not cast right now, so his res are going to suck. See, they're 54 without this thing, but that's why it's nice to have some res on the helm as well. So before the fade casts on your treachery, he's going to have decent res still. But treachery is great for the attack speed and the fade. So your merc is pretty much kicking ass. And then I'll show you guys my skills, alright? You want at least one into all of these passives. I'm actually thinking about bumping a few of these up a little bit more. This dodge... Avoid and evade our GG man. You're so defensive with these. And that's another thing. If you put on Spirit over Storm Shield, I think these are all going to be over 50% easily with just one point in them. Another thing is you got to get this Pierce over 66%, uh, okay? Got to get it to 67% or higher. Because Razor Tail, even though it says Piercing Attack, that's really only a 33% Pierce is what it offers. So you need to get that pierce over 100% or 100% or more so you're gonna need 67 on here or greater okay so I got too many in mind now so I can respect this character once again and I don't have any in the bow I do have a hybrids on as well it's nice having some in the bow for some situations uh, and it doesn't take much you can like put one point in a multi shot one into strafe and then you're pretty much good but uh, I didn't this is just a pure Java's on build then, of course, for uh, your Java's on skills, you're just going maxed out Light Fury, maxed out, maxed out Charge Strike, maxed out Light Bolt, and then maybe the rest in a Synergy, which is uh, Lightning Strike. But that's it, brah. That's it, brah. Now, Diablo 3 is actually going to reset their ladder the 21st of this month, September. I'm thinking about making a character for that, man. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. It's fun to mix it up sometimes and uh, play Diablo 3. I did it a little bit about a month ago, and I had a good time for like a week or two. So I might do that when the ladder resets, all right? Ooh, look at this, a coronet. Always uh, identify these things, man. Two to Paladin skills. Shit, nothing. Early in the ladder, I, I found a two Paladin skill circlet, and it traded for a, a decent amount. But this one's too shitty. That's the only good thing about it, is the two paladin skills. But if you will like this damn video, and how does your Javazan differ from mine? Hmm? And do you think this is good advice? Comment below your thoughts on the matter and like this damn video. I am the Iceman. Peace be with you.